So, um, for um, today, we want to look at indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule. Okay. Now we know that uh, a function f of x, for instance, y is equal to f of x is continuous if I take the limit as let's say that x approaches a of f of x. This is equal to a. Um, then, then f of x is continuous at at a. Okay. Now there are times where you have you are taking the limit um, and it's not clear. For instance, where the limit is going to go. Okay. And so in those cases, we have things um, that that the limit is difficult to determine the limit, and so we say it is indeterminate. Okay, and L'Hopital's rule helps us to be able to find this limit. Uh, one of those, you've probably seen this one before, is that uh, the limit, let's say for instance, as x approaches zero of sine of x all over x, okay, this we know is equal to one. Like how? Right? Because if you just look at expression on itself, if you plug in, right, x is zero in here, you get a zero. If you plug in x is zero here, you get a zero as well. So you're going to have, if you just do what we did here, plug in, in x is equal to zero, zero, x is equal to a in place of x, and you get f of a. If you do that here, you're going to have a zero all over a zero. And so we say this form is an indeterminate form because it's difficult to determine. This is going to zero, this is also approaching zero. Would the whole expression approach zero or approach a number? In this case, it's not approaching zero, it's going to approach some number, okay? So we have several form um, known as indeterminate forms. So this is one of them, and we'll come across this a lot of times. We also have, if you like, if you have uh, infinity over infinity, if you want plus or minus, plus or minus, those are indeterminate forms. We'll see later that other indeterminate forms are, let's say, 0 to the power 0, like 1 raised to the power infinity. Uh, let's say we have infinity raised to the power 0. All of these are termed as indeterminate forms. So in finding the limit, we'll see why finding the limit is important when we look at scales or order of magnitude. But when finding the limit, if you come across this, then you have what is termed as an indeterminate form. And so you have to use L'Hopital's rule to be able to find uh, those limits. Okay? Good. Now, what does L'Hopital's rule say? It says that, A, for instance, um, I have limits as x approaches A of a function f of x over another function g of x. Okay? If this gives me an indeterminate form, okay, if I get an indeterminate form. Then, to find a limit, what I do is that I take limit x approaches a, and I differentiate this with respect to x, f prime with respect to x, all over, differentiate this with respect to x as well, j prime with respect to x. Once I do this, I can find the limit, and that will give me, that will remove the fact that it was indeterminate, and I can find the limit. Okay, by substitution. Okay. That is basically L'Hopital's rule. For instance, you can easily apply that to this, right? Over here, we have the limit. Limit as x approach, approaches zero of sine of x all over x. Again, we have an indeterminate form, zero over zero. So we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches zero of. Now you differentiate sine of x, that gives you cosine of x. Differentiate x as is you one. And so now you can basically substitute as x goes to zero, cosine of zero is one. So you have one over one, and that gives you one. Okay, so that is why the limit of sine x over x as x goes to zero gives you one. Okay. Now warning, you have to be careful about this. Warning. Number one is that limits, this says that take the derivative of the numerator separately and take the derivative of the denominator separately. Don't use the, uh, the quotient rule, okay? 
Don't use the quotient rule for Lupita's rule. In other words, this, don't do this. This f prime over g prime of x. This is not the same as d dx of f of x over g of x. This is not equal to that. So be careful about that. Number two, okay, the second warning is that apply apply the rule only when you encounter or when you have an indeterminate form. Okay. Don't apply Lopita's rule. Okay. And final limit, don't apply it if you don't have any of these indeterminate forms. Apply it when you encounter an indeterminate form. I will show you an example. For instance, look at this. We have, for instance, limits. The limit, let's say the limit as x approaches. This is zero of three x squared plus two x minus one all over, let's say x squared plus one, okay? Now, as x approaches zero, if you just go straight away and substitute, this goes to zero, that goes to zero, this goes to zero, negative one over one, this should give you negative one, all right? And that is the limit, good. Now, what happens if we apply L'Hopital's rule? Okay, if you apply L'Hopital's rule, applying L'Hopital, you're going to have limit as x goes to zero of the derivative of this is six x, right? Plus this is two, this goes to zero, all over, I'm going to have two x here, this goes to zero. Now, if I put in zero, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, and I get two. And this is wrong, if you like. This is wrong. So you have to be careful when applying the rule. The rule only applies when you meet an indeterminate form. So that is when you have to apply the class rule. Great. So now let's see some examples of um, L'Hopital's rule for the zero over zero case and the infinity over infinity case. Let's look at these um, examples. We have, okay, so let's do this. So examples. few more examples okay all right so for this we have uh, a we want to find the limit as x goes to 1 of x cubed plus x squared minus 2x all over x minus 1. So let's see, if you plug in x is equal to 1 in here, what do you get? You have, you're going to have 1 plus 1 minus 2 
that is zero. One minus this is zero. So you have a zero over zero. Okay, because it's zero over zero, that is an indeterminate form. So you can apply L'Hopital's rule. So applying the rule, this implies we can have, we're gonna have limit x and x equals to one half. Now differentiate this, that gives you three x squared plus two x minus two all over, this is just one, okay? So now straight out away, we can plug in our, uh, we can plug in one. So if you put x equals one, I'm gonna have three plus two minus two is equal to three. So that gives me the answer for that, okay? Now, B says we want limit as x goes to zero of the square root of nine minus three x minus 3 all over x. Again, if you plug in x is equal to 0, you're going to have, this goes to 0, square root of 9 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. This is also 0, so you're going to have 0 over 0. So this gives us 0 over 0 as well. Because of that, again, we apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay? So this should be equal to the limit as x goes to 0 of now we're going to differentiate. Differentiate this guy here. It's to the power of half. So I'm going to have one half. I have nine minus three x raised to the power negative one half. Multiply by the derivative of what is in here, that is negative three. This is zero all over one. Okay. So this is equal to because this is one, I mean, I can just plug in x is zero, right? If it's zero, I'm going to have one half here. I'm going to have nine to the minus one half multiplied by negative three, okay? This is equal to one over, this is two square root of nine, that is three times negative three. This cancels out, that gives you negative, negative one over two, negative one half. All right, so again, straight away, we can apply L'Hopital's rule because this is just a zero over zero for both of them, zero over zero cases. So apply L'Hopital's rule and then you are there. Okay, now let's see, we can do um, a few more examples, hopefully for the case where you have the limits going to um, infinity. Uh, let's look at this case, for instance. We have the limit as x goes to infinity, one to find ln of x all over x. Um, we can do uh, one more of this. Let's see. That's fine. Okay, so let's just do this one. 25. Okay. So let's let's pick this one. Then we'll move on to um, we'll move on to um, a different case. So note this: as x goes to infinity, ln ln goes to infinity. Ln is um, ln goes like that. So as x goes to infinity, it keeps increasing. So this goes to infinity, and as next x goes to infinity, this goes to infinity as well. So in this case, we have the infinity over infinity. Um, indeterminate form. Okay? So apply L'Hopital's rule. So I have limit x going to infinity of the derivative of ln x, that is 1 over x. And this one is just 1. So I have limit as x goes to infinity of this 1 over that, that's 0. So this just goes to 0. Okay? So that is that for um, the infinity over infinity case. Alright?